Welcome to Contractor Cuts, where we cover the good, the bad, and the ugly of growing a successful contracting company. Welcome back to Contractor Cuts. My name is Clark Turner. I'm Jared Flo. Thank you for joining us again. So this week we are talking about when you should bring on consultants and help in growth uh, in your company and when you should do it on your own and just use the resources around you for free. Right. Uh, you know, we all the time get the question, you know, I don't think I'm ready. When should I when should I bring you guys in? I'd, I'd love the help to get to the next level. I don't have the money. Well, and to be perfectly honest, there's there's a lot of times that we get phone calls from people that they hear some content from yep. us, they enjoy it, whatever, and they call us and they're interesting and inquiring and coaching. And we'll actually talk them out of it and be like, you know what? It's it's not the right time for yeah. you. Yeah. This isn't the best time for you to jump in. You need to get to this level before it makes sense for you. And and with that being said, we don't make enough money on on the consulting and coaching for it not to work for somebody, for yep. them to fail out and not be able to continue with us. So we put a lot of time and energy into them to where it's a long-term relationship. So if it's not good for the company that we're working with and we don't see the value that we're, we can add there, we say no. Yep. And, and that's that's the truth of it, where we don't want to hurt someone financially trying to make it work to, to bring us in to help uh, grow their company if it's not going to make them a better company. Right. It's going to hurt them financially to where they're un unstable. Uh, and so today we're talking about that. We're, we're laying out exactly what coaching consulting is. And then we're also going to talk about every level of a company, whether you're starting the company or you've been doing it and you're doing 10 million a year, when you should say yes to a consultant, hey, I need help getting to the next level. And when you should say, you know what, I'm going to coast right now. I don't need help. Thank you guys. There is a, 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 a time to say yes and a time to say no. We're going to kind of separate those out. Yeah, yeah. But a big a, a big piece of that is you know making the the financial monetary commitment to yeah. um, coaching consulting. It should be mildly painful, right? Yeah. It should. Gosh, this is a lot of money to spend and whatever. It should be, and it's going to be that. But if making that spend is going to be detrimental to the success, success of your business, it doesn't matter how good a coach you've got. Yeah. Right. So it, there, there's a there's a financial aspect of this. Uh, do do the numbers make sense? Yeah. But then there's also a timing piece of it as well. Yeah. So yeah, if if you're talking with someone to be a consultant that's not us, that's totally great. Get yeah. this information, learn it. But if they're just trying to sell you to get your money and separate you from your cash, that's a short-term vision that yeah. a lot of a lot of these coaches that we've seen have where you need the long-term vision because, yeah, getting two months worth of coaching that I get paid for and then you fail out, that's a waste of my time. I need you to be successful for 24 months and then some and, and launch from that point. If we can't get you there, I don't want to waste our time on that. So yeah. that's kind of what we're laying out today is when you should say yes, when you should talk to us, and when you should say, you know what, I'm going to talk to you guys next month, next year, six months from now. For us, we want it to be the best timing for you and your company, mm -hmm. but we also don't want you to make some bad decisions setting up a foundation to where bringing us in is really solving problems where, that you spent fifty, sixty, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 on correcting because you didn't bring us in early enough. Right, right. So that's what we're laying out today. Uh, and even if you're not interested in consulting and coaching, we're going to kind of lay out what you should be doing without a coach in these moments. If you're not going that way, this is how you should be doing it. So even if you're not interested, it's a great podcast to listen to in, in terms absolutely. of that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Getting started, we're going we're gonna to diagram and lay out the two packages of coaching that we have just because we're going to talk about that throughout this episode. And so really kind of narrowing it down, we've got, uh, we can customize each package around what people need, but our two standard packages is we've got our coaching partnership mm -hmm. and then we have our executive partnership. Yep. So the coaching partnership is we give you our processes, procedures, our paperwork. We do a four week onboarding training where you learn all of that stuff. And we, we get to know you, understand your systems and really start putting together your project management processes with you, show you ours and kind of combining and marrying how you run things as well as how we re have realized through uh, the learning the hard way, the best way to run a project and that, that sort of thing. So well, uh, really one big piece about that, that level yeah. is um, it, it's giving you a jump start or a head start yeah. in some of the things that you're going to have to do. You're going to have to create, you're going to have to develop. We've already got them. We've yeah. got the paperwork. We've got pro systems and processes, not to mean, not meaning that, you're going to come in and kind of be a lemming and this is how you have to operate. Yep. It is, here is how we recommend setting things up. Now let's look at your business, how you function, how you work. 
what makes the most sense for you, yep. and then it becomes you you make it your own. Yeah, right? this isn't a syllabus where you go through a course right. and it's just a one size fits all. For us, and that's that's the purpose of individual coaching is that we learn your company and say, okay, we do it this way, we suggest it this way, but for your specific situation, I would change it this way. Right. How would that work for you? And what if we did it this way? And then a lot of times what we hear is guys say, well, I like how I pay my subs in, th in this traction, right? And we say, yep. okay, that's great. Do it that way right now, but that's not duplicatable. You can't hire four project managers over the next two years and be able to continue paying your subs that way or whatever, yep. whatever the example is. And so we'll give you the, the pros and cons of adjusting and changing the processes that we lay out. And at the end of the day, it's your company and we're here to support yeah, you. Yeah, I tell, I mean, every one of the, the, the companies that I coach and the individuals that I coach, I tell them it is not my job to tell you what to do. Yeah. Um, I'm going to help guide you in your thoughts and processes and whatever you are thinking about doing. I'm going to give you my thoughts perspective based on my experience of if you go that direction, I think this could be the outcome. Yep. If you want to go that way, that's fine. Let's set up these things. Right. But yep. it's it, it's it's uh, it, it's not a dictatorship. It is what is best for you and your company. You know your company way better than I'm ever going to be able to know it. Yep. But I'm going to be able to apply some experience to the decisions you're making and help you make a more educated decision. Yep. That's that's essentially what it what it uh, boils right. down to. And our coaching level is we give you the the infrastructure, we mm -hmm. give you the blueprint and we help bu you build your blueprint and we're coaching you down going down that path. Yeah. So it's a once a month coaching meeting, it's a one-on-one -on -one coaching. It's not a group coaching like a lot of people do. It is one-on-one -on -one coaching yeah. with us. Uh, and then uh, to to really be walking down the path month over month. So the first four weeks is really setting it all up, laying out what the next 12 months should look like. And then we have a, the winter retreat that you come on every January and we look at, okay, what happened in the last year? What's going on next year? Right. And so we're constantly building, adjusting, changing your blueprint of the company. And the coaching is, here's the blueprint, here's the information, here's the paperwork. Go do it. Yeah. And well, then, so. and, and you know, so we we call it the the coaching partnership or the growth po partnership, That's right? Right. Yeah. And and the the reason for that is on that level, we we spend the first four weeks of creating some baseline fundamentals and blueprinting where you want to go, yep. um, and making decisions of based on where you want to go. Here are the executables that you need to be working on now. And then your coach every, once a month is there for direction and accountability, yep. right? Every month, hey, here's what we said we're going to do. How did that go? Do you have any questions about that? Did you get it done? Yep. Yeah, I got most of it done, but I didn't get this thing done. Okay, great. Then let's move that to this next month. But it becomes somebody who is helping you stay on track with the growth that you said that you wanted to have. Yeah. It's right? accountability. <laughs> and it's also eating the elephant one bite at a time. That's because right. You get there's so many things that have to be done to grow your company. We oftentimes see guys working towards, okay, I'm gonna put this paperwork together for my next hire. Well, you're you're ten months away from even being able to afford a hire. Like, look, let's look at your financials and the jobs that you have on the books. Like, you can't hire right now. Why are you wasting your time on that when you don't have X, Y, and Z set up for your company yeah. yet, right? And so yeah. it's the accountability, but also the the one bite at a time. Here's the three things you got to do this month to be successful. If you do those when we meet next month, here are the next three things you got to do. Yeah. Well, and one of the things that I would say is the most difficult part of the growth in a general contracting or, you know, construction company. Um, we've said this a, a thousand times on our podcast. Uh, this business will eat up every second that you've got, yep. right? And if, if you don't learn how to take control of your time, you will never have time to work on your business. And working on your business is the only way that you grow. Mm -hmm. So the benefit of having this this coaching or growth level is that you have a person that you know you had a discussion with what you're going to execute. And you're, go you're going to want to show up to the next meeting with those things done. So it's going to help force you to take that time to be working on those things, which yep. are the things that are going to help you grow your company. So it kind of, it, it, it naturally helps you with your time management, unless you're a person who's like, I don't care what this other guy thinks and I'll, you know, I'll do whatever I want. Then yep. you, know, you probably shouldn't be on coaching in the first place. Yeah, exactly. Right. It's a waste but of it, 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 having that person of accountability that, you know, you're going to have to sit down and talk and be like, yeah, I didn't get my crap done. Right. Helps you kind of mo stay motivated to on a weekly basis. You can't just keep executing these things it doesn't allow you to kick the can down the road and keep putting stuff on the back burner and six months later you look up and you're in the exact yeah. same spot you are at t today yeah. now and there have been plenty of guys that i've coached that month over month over month they show up and like ah dude i didn't get it done and i'm not 
hammering them, yeah. right? I'm not calling them bad names, but I'm, I'm there to be like, all right, dude, you said you wanted to get here. You, you're you're not going to get there if you if you want to stay where you're at. That's fine, but you've got to get these yeah. things done if you want to move to the next level. Well, and what's what's the reason that this isn't getting done? So instead of doing task A uh-huh. next month, what we're going to do is break down and figure out why you can't do task A yeah. because it's been three months now and it's still not done, right? And so let's break that down, look at that, and work on self control, yeah. uh, respecting time. You're trying to do this every Monday morning, but fires are popping up over the weekend. Why don't we switch it to a Wednesday morning? Yeah, right? I've Sorry. done that. I've done that a lot yeah. where it's <laughs> the, so the person who's showing up and not getting things done. I don't default to like, well, they're just a slack ass and they're not yeah. getting, they, they don't care or whatever. Yeah. It's most of the time. There's a reason why yeah. they were, they, they had all the gumption in the world to get it done, but it just wasn't fires. executable yeah. the way that we set it up. So let's organize it in a way that it is, uh, you can consume it. Yep. So that's our, that's our growth path. Uh, it's the growth partnership that we offer where it's the once a month coaching. Mm-hmm. It's, it's really just impl- here's our stuff. Do it yourself. We're going to help guide you through it. Yep. It's a guided tour of growth. Uh, and that's our growth partnership. The other partnership is the, is a higher paid one, but it is our executive level. Uh, and the executive partnership is it's a six week onboarding and it starts with you coming to our headquarters in Atlanta or we can come out to your uh, facility wherever you are uh, that we haven't done too many of those where we go out unless you've got a, a full staff where we need to a larger interview company, the staff, yeah. understand mm-hmm. right when you've got four five six seven people on staff and we need to understand the personalities and what's going on we'll come to you um, it, it's just different levels of, of packages of yeah. uh, and cost that, that makes sense so a lot of times you'll come to Atlanta sit with Jared and I and we'll prep for about a week for that meeting and on that we sit down learn and understand your company and it's a six week onboarding because we are running the company like we're executives in your in your company we're on your board of directors yeah um in a sense in the way that we view the company and how we give advice so the executive level is getting our executive team um me jared or our coaches that are going to be helping you uh, and intimately understanding yeah. your company. And from there... Essentially, we're involved weekly. Yes. If, n- if not weekly, at least bi-weekly, yep. we're involved with what's going on. We know what's happening. We know decisions that are being made. But also, you as the owner of the company have the opportunity at any given moment be like, hey, what do you think about this? Yep. You know, I, I'm, I'm struggling with this. I've got this homeowner who said this. How would you deal with that? So you have somebody on your team to process with on, uh, on, on any given moment. Yeah. But then it goes down to strategic business decisions decisions, hires, interviews with new with potential employees. Is it time to fire somebody? I mean, all of that type of stuff we're, we'll walk with you on an we'll, individual we'll basis. We'll do interviews if you narrow them <clears throat> down to two final hires and you yeah. want, to fig- want a second opinion on who, which one you should go with. Yeah. Really, we are on, you're bringing us in on your executive team. Yep. And it's, it's really, really affordable of a price of, of where it's at. So that's more of the consulting plus coaching, where mm-hmm. we're consultants in your company and helping you form and build and under and really getting our hands dirty on that. And you get two people from our team on on that as opposed to just one coach that's, that's guiding you. Through. Yeah, and so, obviously you've still got the you know growth path you know uh, yeah. guidance, and and we're working towards that growth. Yeah, it's just more in depth and involved. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a lot bigger of a safety net in terms of you have our brains wrapped around why or why not you're making those yeah. decisions as opposed to, all right, next you got to work on this, go work on it and, and, and launch what you're doing with that. Yeah. So, so that, that's what our coaching and, and consulting levels um, look like, consist of yep. um, what makes it the right choice. When, yep. when is the right time to say, you know what, it's, it's time for me to do that. Yeah. So let's walk through stages of a company to, to say when you say yes, and when you say no. Yeah. So starting off is a startup company, yep. right? I'm starting my company. We're launching next month. I'm, I've applied for a, a tax ID number. I've got a yep. company name. I'm not really taking on work yet, but I'm, I'm, I'm going. Maybe I've been flipping homes and I'm sure. looking to start doing the GC stuff on top of it. And I've got a really good uh, pipeline of houses that I'm flipping myself so I can at least start there. Whatever it is, I'm ready to start start the a, a GC company or a, a renovation company or a new build company or whatever construction right. related company that you're looking at doing. We say do not hire us. Mm-hmm. Do not bring in a consultant. Do not bring in a coach at that spot if you are going to be out in the field doing the work for the foreseeable future. Right. If I am starting a framing company and I'm going to be doing all the framing, bring a guy with me, helping me out, but I'm starting my own LLC and I'm going to be a subcontractor for these other GCs 
and I'm just going to run it for a while and, and get some traction and get some jobs and get, do not hire a consultant at that stage. Right. That is a waste of your money because your time is going to be spent executing and exchanging your time for money. Mm -hmm. So you can start building up some cash, some clientele and a name for yourself. It, you can hire us if you want, but what you're wasting your money on is we're not putting processes and procedures in place to grow to the next level. We're solidifying the level we're at right now, yeah. which is a hammer swinger, which is a, a laborer for yourself where you're out in the field doing the work. Which, like I said earlier, the only way for the growth to work yep. is you to have time to work on your company. Yep. And if 99% of your time is you know out in the field swinging hammers on a job site, it becomes very, very, very difficult. Yep. Um, one thing that I would say about this level is as you're starting up a company, in our growth path, we have something called the base level, yep. right? There, there's four or five stages to the to the growth path. Uh, growth path checklist, but it starts with the base level. So if you are a startup company and you have a little bit of saved up cash from, you know what, I saved up some money because I know I wanted to start this company. And so I've got a little bit of reserved money. Yep. It It's not a horrible idea, right? It, it, it could be beneficial because our base level, we go through, here's everything that you need to start a company. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you have these things set up. And I mean, obviously the basics of you need a tax ID number, you need articles of incorporation, you need insurance Bank and all accounts, that stuff, Bank cards, accounts, credit all, cards. Yeah. But we're, we're wrapping that around where we're going next, yeah. right? So if you have a little bit of cash that you could afford to burn it for a little while to get some help and guidance on those things, that's available. Um, but again, like you said, if you don't have uh, extra cash and your plan is right now for, for at least the foreseeable future, you're going to be exchanging your time for money out in the field. It's not a great time to hire a consultant Correct. because you're not going to have enough time to implement what you're receiving to get a return on that money you're spending. Yep. Now, if you're launching a company and you're not planning on being out in the chuck in a truck, the guy going and executing the work, you're planning on launching a general contracting company where you are going to be project managing, mm -hmm. systematically landing clients, using labor to get the work done. I'm not the labor, but I'm, I'm a project manager here. Right you need to bring us in. Um, yeah. Ideally, if you can get a runway of eight, 10, 12 months that you don't need to take a paycheck, mm -hmm. if, you can, if you've got that money, if you've got a loan, SBA, what, whatever you're doing, to where you can not be dependent on the money coming in, but also be able to bring consultants to lay that base foundation in, it is a great move to have that foundation laid. Yeah. Um, again, it's, it's very inexpensive on our, uh, on the, the coaching level or the growth uh, partnership that we have. Right. Uh, it's very inexpensive to start there. Yeah. Um, if you want to really, if you see yourself doing over a million in the first year as a renovation company, you probably need to be on our consulting level or executive plus level because mm -hmm. there is a lot of moving parts in that first couple of years in terms of getting launched. So how you're starting up and looking at the company and what it's going to look like is, is super important as to, should I hire and which level should I be at? And that's where we start with conversations with people interested in coaching of tell us what your goals are. Tell mm -hmm. us where you're headed because we might not be the fit for you. That's right. Um, and so that's when you're starting a company, that's where it's at. Uh, next, if you've already started a company, you're six months in or you're all out in the field and working and you're moving in, trying to get into the project manager, you're trying to move out of the truck where you're swinging the hammer and into managing mm -hmm. your company and growing your company. That's kind of the next level after startup. Yeah. This is a spot that you definitely need help if mm -hmm. you've never done it before. And here's the thing, we're not gurus, we're not geniuses, we don't know more than than you uh, and we're not higher IQ than most of these most of the people that we coach, right? Yeah. What we have is doing it the wrong way and doing it the right way and mm -hmm. understanding why we chose the direction we did when setting something up. Right? Yeah. We've We've done a lot of things wrong. We've done stuff wrong in the past couple of years in Absolutely. our construction company Absolutely. that we're still learning lessons from. Mm -hmm. But we have 18, 19 years of running a general contracting company, making those decisions. We've hired and fired 40 to 50 people as project managers throughout that time. We've, yep. we've made the wrong hires. We've made the wrong decisions. We can save you hundreds of thousands of dollars in bad decision making just by going through the program. Right. Um, if I had this uh, we've set this up to where if I had this when I started, 
I would have expedited the first eight <laughs> to 10 years of, of yeah. learning and skinning my knee to where we get it done in 18 months. And I, I don't have to learn the hard way. It's, a, it's way cheaper to have someone help me know and understand the hard way and the right way to do things versus learning the hard way and, and burning cash on that. Yeah. So that's one of the big things. We, we have a, a coaching client that when he started with us, he'd been in business for six months. Um, and when he came in, he started talking to us. He was like, hey, I'm paying myself X. Uh, and we're like, well, the monthly pay that you're paying yourself, that's how much we charge yep. uh, to, to be on our full executive level. And he signed up with us. And two years later, he just graduated into the alumni uh, class with us. And yeah. Well, and he literally at that point, he looked at us and said, you know what, uh, based on what you guys have said, what you guys have given me so far, I'm willing to roll the dice of my paycheck yep. of what, what this is going to do for me. Yeah. And, and he's just now graduated into the executive program. Doing or, multi-million or the, the dollars. Alumni program. Yeah. yeah, a multi-million dollar company with, with employees and, and growing it. So yeah. again, for that's a big responsibility that we feel in terms of, all right, we are going to make this work mm -hmm. for him because he is financially committed to us. Yeah. And we did. And, yeah. and, and he's, he's killing it right now. He's thriving. Yeah. 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 Now, a, a, another thing about the level that you were just talking about, which yeah. is the, the, the transition from in the field uh, all the time to full-time project manager. In yeah. our assessment of all of the transitions of growth, this one is the one that is one of the most difficult, and it's the one that people stumble over the most. I, I can't tell you how many people have been in the hamster wheel in this spot. Yep. They keep trying to go full project management, and they fall back into putting on their tool belt over yep. and over and over and over. Mm -hmm. And a, a big a big reason for that is because there's a financial change, a financial shift in this spot, yep. right? And so it's just a really difficult spot, and to have... Um, and it's a fragile spot that you can spend money in the wrong place and really, really, you know, uh, put yourself in a bad spot. Yeah. So it, it's a really uh, good place to bring in somebody who's made that transition, um, who has the experience of going through this to help walk you through do this, then this step, then this step. Yep. Now you're ready to make that move at the least liability, the least cost, because we've had these things set up, yep. right? So that's why in this place, it's a really great spot to bring in, you know, to, to join on the executive yep. or to the, the growth, whichever one. Well, it's a good spot. To also, bring when, you, when you're transitioning from being in the field to being a project manager running the labor, the biggest area that you have no clue that you don't realize is that your entire process of execution is in your brain. Mm -hmm. You are the process that makes this so successful. People are buying you, mm -hmm. not your company. They want you and your process in your brain. And for you, uh, you know, it is very simple. Like this is just how you do it. Yeah. You, you tell people when things are happening. You do this. You show up when you say you're going to show up. You do. It's all uh, common like, sense, no brainer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As soon as you start running crews, running subs or labor, however you, you're set up. As soon as you get there, you realize, oh, other people's brains don't run like me. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Because if they did, they wouldn't need to work for me. They'd be working on this themselves. So right. how do we transition from your brain and how you work and run jobs to how I teach other people and run my subcontractors and vendors and labor to execute as good or if not better than I do it? Right. Right. And so it seems easy. Hey, just run the truck. Let me show you how to do it. You could be my assistant. And you become a babysitter for that first hire mm -hmm. if you're hiring a project manager or you become a pull the tool belt out because that crew didn't do how I wanted them to do it. I told them exactly what I wanted done and it didn't get done. I got to go just fix it and do it myself. Right. 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 So there's really three areas that we teach on where you lose money, significant amount of money. And then in, in this spot, going from in the field to project management, it's the first two. It is. I could, you can lose money on how you run your labor, mm -hmm. how you charge your labor, how you have expectations set around the labor, how you have your labor agreements, how you onboard them, how you treat them and train them. How, how they operate on site. Yep. I mean, and next week we're going to dive deep into that yeah. too of, of how to do that well. Mm -hmm. um, but that is where you lose a ton of money. You either make money or lose money on the people doing the labor on the job when you stop doing the labor. Right. The other uh, Number two is the customer. How do I communicate? How do I help them understand change orders? How do I lay out expectations of what they should and shouldn't expect? Communication problems, estimates, all, things left off of estimates, yes, all of that stuff. All of that. That's the second spot that, <clears throat> that, that you can lose money. The third one is hiring employees, and that's not where you're at yet if yeah. you're going from in the field to project management. Yeah. But the first two, 
is a make or break for your company. Yeah. If I don't have the processes in place for both of those areas, I am going to lose money, guaranteed. Yep. You will lose more money trying to run those yourself and learning the hard way than just hiring a consultant to say, listen, this is the right way, this is the wrong way, here's the process, here's how you do it, here's how you don't do it, here's how, what worked for us. This looks very attractive to do it this way, but let me show you the pitfalls of that, mm -hmm. right? And give you all of the information to make those decisions as opposed to just saying, I don't know, I'll, I'll try. I'll throw some stuff against the wall and see what sticks. Right, which is what we did. Which and is what we did and <laughs> lost. We failed more times than we won. Yeah, I mean, we've lost over a million dollars over the years in, when it comes to all of these areas that we've learned the hard way. Yep. So that's, that's the cheat code that we're giving out is you're just seeing all of the ways that we, we do it now because we've learned the hard way. Yeah. Well, and in this level, um, you know, when, when you get to the place where you're no longer putting your tool belt on and you're, you're a project manager, everything that you were talking about, that is your job at that spot. In our, you know, coaching and consulting program, yeah. in that spot, your job is to take our information, the way we've laid things out, and apply that to how you do things, what makes the most sense for you, how you want to execute, what your jobs look like from top to bottom, from when a lead comes in the door to when you get paid. Take all of that information and then record it. What? How do I operate? Yep. Why do I do it that way? How many phone calls do I want? How many touch points? What do I say to clients? How do I treat crews? All of those things, you're working to kind of document how I do things. And what you're doing is you have, you're, you're creating what will be used in the next stage of when you go to hire employees because sure. you've got to be able to teach people how to create, how, how to run your process. Yep. And so in this spot, all you're doing is working to create efficiency in the way that you run and then recording, this is how I want things done, yep. right? And then now once you've got that, you can start making that transition to the next level where you start hiring employees and hiring people yeah. because you have something to guide them with. Well, and the first the first processes that we're, we're putting in place, if you're moving from in the truck to management, mm -hmm. is how is the execution on site happening with the customer, with with my labor, and mm -hmm. that's that's one thing. The next level is what you're talking about: is how do I train people to run those processes right. for me, right? And mm -hmm. so the first step, startup. Second step is in the field of project management. The third step is p project manager to my first hire, yep. right? And so that's the next transition that <clears throat> people lose a lot of money on and do really. I mean, for us, it was years. Oh, yeah. It slowed us down for years on on the wrong hires to where it <laughs> but was. But every hire, yeah, every one of them, we were like, "This is the guy. This is it. We found it. it, we, it he's awesome. We went out for beers. He was such a good dude. I loved him to death. Mm -hmm. This was great. He's gonna be killer. He's been doing this for twenty years, and he's so much blah blah blah. Yeah." Fired. Three, three to six months later, <laughs> cost us hundreds of thousands yeah. of dollars. Yeah. yeah, because and here's the key: those hires. If done without the proper structure in place, you are betting on that person running the, your jobs the way that works for them in their brain. Uh -huh. And if that works, they wouldn't be working for you. They wouldn't be looking for a job. No, they'd mm -hmm. be out running their own jobs mm -hmm. and having their own company. If they can run jobs successfully, their system, they shouldn't be working for you. Right. Your system needs to add into them to where you take all of their strengths and organized through my system and they can execute my system almost as good as me, if not better. Yeah. Well, right? and it, it, you, you really need to view it kind of as I'm, I'm going to hire somebody and put them through the Jared school of contracting. Yep. This is how I operate. This is how I treat clients. This right. is how I run. This is when I walk jobs, when I walk them, this is what I do. Yep. Right. All of those things that you will, will then become accountability for that person. I, we talked about that. It's written down on your job job description. This is how I expect you to run and what I'm going to hold you accountable to. But that's that's really when you're bringing a hire in. You're not hiring. If you're hiring to rescue or you're hiring because this guy's got so much experience, I'm going to make so much money off of him immediately, that's a problem. That's yeah. a red flag. Yeah. Because it, at bare minimum, he's going to dilute the brand of you and your company by bringing in the way that he does things and he's not going to operate the way yeah. that you do. If right? you here's here's a good delineation also. If I'm going to hire a project manager for my company and it's my first hire, are we doing the same job or are they doing a separate job that I'm keeping them accountable to, mm -hmm. right? So, am I hiring Jared to come along with me and be my assistant and help us do these jobs and we kind of all do the same thing and 
every information on every job is in both of our heads. Mm -hmm. That is hiring an assistant that you're babysitting, and you're not going to be able to double the amount of work you're doing. You're going to be able to increase by 10 to 20%. That's what I was going to say. And the the Mm -hmm. number of hours of of your week are going to increase by 30 to 40%, Mm -hmm. because not only are you managing more work, you're also now managing this other person Mm -hmm. and their flaws and what they're doing wrong because they're not doing it, right? And so if you're hiring them as an assistant without their own job description that I hold them accountable to, then you're doing it wrong. Yep. Uh, for us, every project manager is a mini GC inside of our company. Mm-hmm. They are the heroes here that we are supporting and building up to where if they work for us, they're gonna make more money on our backs and we will make money off them together than if they're out running by themselves yep. because our systems are in place that expedite, we give them great support, we do great uh, everything, all the surrounding stuff, they show up, execute the job, do the project management, and kill it as their own mini GC inside of our company. That's right, without without the risk. Without the risk, yeah. yeah. They don't they don't have, they have a steady paycheck coming in, and for us, we have a, a fully functioning system to execute to ensure that they are they they're held accountable, but also aren't micromanaged. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, that that is a spot. If you're going to your new hire, you need help. You can do that on your own for sure. You're going to learn the hard way. Our system is cheaper than one wrong hire. Yep. <laughs> Plain and simple. So I would say if you are running a company looking for your first hire, there is not a time to, there is not a good time to say, I'll, I'll, I'll get some help later in consulting mm-hmm. yep. for us. Let us help you set that up for that hire and ensure that everything's in place. So you don't lose 30, 50, $80,000 on that first hire making the wrong decision. Yeah. Uh, the, in, in this business growing, I mean, in, in any business, um, but specifically the, the construction world, the most difficult and the most costly thing that you will do is hire. Yep. That's it. Yep. I mean, it. It is very, very hard to find good hires. It's very, very hard to find people that will have longevity in your company, will treat clients right, and do all of that stuff. It's very difficult to find them, um, which and it takes time to find out if they're the right one. Yeah, you can't. You're not going to know week one. Yeah. You're not going to know week two. Right, and so it costs you cash. You got to burn money every time you make a hire. So stack the deck in your advantage yeah. by bringing somebody in who's done it. 50 times over the wrong way. Well, and if, right? you, if you are hiring the right person, they are not going to be happy as your assistant. Yeah. The right person needs to be able to run on their own. And this is a whole diatribe on who <laughs> to hire and when and how. Yeah. But if you're hiring someone who's happy riding in shotgun next to you and being your assistant, mm-hmm. they're never going to separate out and grow the company. Sustain on their own. You are yeah. going to be babysitting them forever. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and so that's something that people don't understand like, oh, this guy's killing it, he's great, he's helped me say yes to more jobs. Great, You're mm-hmm. just don't hire us, stay there, and you two run this and have an assistant and you know, right. make 100,000 a year and you'll be happy, that's great, do yeah. that, don't hire us. But if you're looking to grow and separate out to where you're not doubling the amount of work you're doing personally, hours wise, mm-hmm. let us help you get there for that. Yeah, yeah. All right, so the last step is going from that first hire, that first employee, to multiple employees, hiring management that's managing the project managers, bringing in an office manager. Again, hiring is the is the third thing that costs you the most money. It's, yep. the, it's the managing your subs properly, managing estimates and clients, change orders, all that stuff uh, accurately, and then the hires. And so yep. that first hire, as well as any additional hire, a strategic hiring plan. We have our HR process from how to find the right hires, how to interview, how to bring them on, what does the first day look like, what is maintenance of that client uh, mm-hmm. of that hire throughout uh, them working for you, and what's a what's a healthy termination? Yeah, how do you do that well? So we've got a whole process on exactly how to do that to cover your butt, uh, to where you're not getting sued. Yeah, uh, but as well as how do we treat people well? How do we treat people right and give them the best opportunity to thrive here and give them the support they need? Well, and going along with that, I I think you're exactly right. The goal of that entire process is to find employees that will have a a long career with, uh, with your business. Um, but also setting them up for success daily, weekly, monthly. Right. And so in this in this level that we were just talking about, and even even back into like if you have hired your first employee and maybe looking for second or third, at that point, bringing on us as a consultant is a great idea. Yeah. But a lot of times 
you've uh, it, it, you've made some strategic decisions that at the time you thought were the right thing, and we'll come in and look at it and be like, mm, if you keep going down that road, this is going to be the effect of that. I think we need to back that out and re. Yep organize the way that you've got your employees set up. It's similar to like, you got a really messy room and the only way to clean it is to make it even more messy to get it cleaned up. Yep. It's kind of that idea. You know, you, you've made some strategic strategic decisions based on your own logic, your own street smarts and what you thought would be best, um, but it's not based on experience. Yep. It's just using logic, yep. right? And so there's a lot of times when we get to this level it's a great idea to bring, you know, coaching and consulting in because you're still going to grow and develop and you're going to need uh, information about leadership and culture and how to grow and keep people and treat people right and all of that stuff. A lot of times when people come in at this point, it's like, OK, time out. Let's back up. And, and most of the companies that come in at that level come in our executive level and they take the two days for our two day intensive that we kind of, you know, we need to know everything. Right. It's the it's the full disclosure meeting. Tell yeah. us everything. Tell us about your employees. Tell us about your family life. How's business? How's the finances? Tell us everything that, that how are your employees set up so that we can kind of take all that, assess it and say, OK, here are the immediate changes that need to happen right now. Yeah. Um, the last one of these that we did was a guy that came in and he had three, four or five uh, W-2 laborers. And we uh, he hired a bunch of labor employees. And then after the meeting, he literally turned around, went back, and he uh, moved all of them to 1099. Yep. He didn't let them go, right? He just changed them to a 1099 because that model is more successful for him. There's more control and not as much liability. And, and we'll cover that next week, yeah. too, diving deep of how that model actually works better yeah. for you and for them yeah. than if you hire them W-2. And we'll talk about that next week. But, yeah, th that is the importance of what we're doing is – let us show you the different ways to do it and the pitfalls of each way. And mm -hmm. let us lay out why we've chosen the ways we have and give you feedback on that. And that, that's the, the whole goal with what we're doing is let's expedite to where you don't learn on your own, uh, uh, learn the hard way on your own. Right. Uh, you can learn from our mistakes. And the, the part of this too, and we're not going to gatekeep anything like for us, the, the growth partnership is 1250 a month. Yep. And that's 15,000 a year. Mm -hmm. One bad move is gonna cost you more than 15,000 a year. Yep. One bad move on a job site is gonna cost you more than $15,000. So it is 1250 a month for that where you're getting everything. Mm -hmm. In and of itself is a huge deal. Yep. Uh, if you want to talk with us about the coaching level, the with our growth partnership or our executive partnership or anywhere in between, we would love to have that conversation with you. If you're not ready for coaching or you're you're in one of the spots where like, hey, do not hire us right now, start with the software. Yep. Software ProStruct 360 is an absolute phenomenal piece of software that that has a million multi-million dollar software that really can run start to finish anything you need done. It is it is built to grow companies from a one man show to where you can manage employees without micromanaging. Yep. We, we teach you that. So the, the structure of the software is the backbone of our systems, mm -hmm. but then we we you you step up and upgrade to coaching, and we will wrap around how to use those systems efficiently for your company, mm -hmm. and we can save you five, six, eight, ten percent uh, on the bottom line if you get more efficient using this stuff. Yeah. So, well, and if you're if, if if you hear this stuff and you're like, dude, I really love the idea about that, but I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm not sure I'm at the right space. Yeah. If, it, if, if it makes sense for me, call us, talk yeah. to us. We, I promise you, we are going to be honest with you. Yeah. We're, we're not trying to just fill our coffers with as many people as we can get, yeah. right? We are trying to create strategic partnerships that are going to be successful. We are for, we advocate for the people that we are, we are working with and we're not, we're not just trying to money grab. Yep. So we, we're going to have a conversation with you. And if it doesn't make sense, we're going to tell you that yeah. and say, look, here's your best bet right now. Join the software. That's going to help you with organization. Continue listening to our podcast. And when you get to this level, let's chat. Yeah. You know, so we're, we're going to be, if, if you're interested on the fence, you're not sure, call us and talk to us. Yeah. We'll, we'll be glad we'll to talk to you. We'll do a 30-minute Zoom with you. We'll yeah. do a, a, we, we give away, if you're on any of our paid versions of the software, on the Complete or Unlimited, we do a free 30-minute uh, Blueprint. blueprinting mm -hmm. session for your company. We, we love to help with that. And that's a great place to start where it's free. If you're yeah. on the software, it's free. Yeah. So get in with that. You'll talk with either Jared or myself on that. 
uh, and we'll sit down be, and kind be, of be better off talk to me. Yeah, you'll you probably know. want to talk to me, but uh, <laughs> we'll sit down and and do a Zoom for thirty minutes with you. We love doing that, and if it's something where it's like you want know to, I want to keep going. Great, it's not a sales meeting. It is yeah. literally let us get you started, yeah. and from there. When you're ready, pull the trigger. Yeah. When you're not, if you're not ready, great. We're, we're not trying to push anyone in anything. No, so no. hopefully that was helpful to understand when you should reach out, when mm -hmm. you shouldn't reach out, uh, the value of it at, versus when it's not as valuable. Yep. Uh, if you have any questions, go to ProStruck360.com. Go to contact us there. You can shoot us an email through the contact us button. Uh, we would love to talk to you about it. We will read those emails ourselves. Oh, yeah. So we, we'd love to hear from you guys. Uh, you can also go to ProStruck360.com and find Alliance. Uh, if you go to across the top, some of the resources, go to the Alliance page and learn more about the coaching there. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can also sign up on our website for the software and start using it today. So yeah. go to ProStruck360.com, get started on the software, uh, and we'll, we'll help you grow to the next level. That's right. All right. Thank you so much for joining us this week, and we will talk to you later. See you next time. Bye.